Hi there, you're on Gossip Says channel, enjoy watching, subscribe and like it, it's growing our community. My 37 plank mass on 21 plank mass left with my girlfriend 32. I don't know how to process this level of betrayal the 19th of August 2018. I apologize in advance if this isn't the most coherent thing in the world. This is partially just me venting to the void. About four years ago I lost my wife, the mother of my son, to lung cancer. We had been together since we were 14. It was the darkest time in my life. I had considered suicide on a nearly daily basis. I pushed on for my son, and because my wife made me promise to make the most of life. We had our son pretty young. I worked two jobs to keep us afloat and thankfully was able to provide a decent upbringing until he moved out at 16, although I still paid and continued to do so until this happened a portion of his bills. The loss was extremely hard on my son as well. He came back to stay with me for a while and we'd work through the grief together every day. I got him into therapy, pushed him to get involved in things to keep his mind busy and when he moved back into his apartment I'd call every night to check on him and visited multiple times a week. We were always extremely close. My wife told me outright after her diagnosis that she didn't want me alone. So I made myself available. My girlfriend and I met about two years ago and hit it off. She isn't my wife but I loved her for who she was and we really connected. I was reluctant to introduce her to my son because I was afraid he'd feel I was betraying his mother so I held off for the first year, which I regretted as they ended up getting along very well. We'd hang out together, my son was happy, I was happy. She moved in with me about five months ago. This past Thursday he was over for dinner and movies. We've had this little game since he was a teenager where I'd pop up over his shoulder when he was on his phone in common areas and say stop looking at that. In an accusing way to mess with him even though he was never looking at anything. Turns out this time he was doing something and I seen topless photos on his phone. I recognized the photos to be of my girlfriend, same tattoo placement between the breasts. I grab the phone from him and he immediately starts pleading his case. I go into gallery and there are easily two dozen photos of my girlfriend, some of him I'm assuming he sent to her, one or two of them together. By this time he's crying and trying to grab the phone back. I check his texts and he has two weeks worth of conversations with her under a different name detailing the fact they've been fucking around behind my back. My girlfriend is in the room begging to know what's going on. I'm not proud of the fact I lost myself. I screamed at them both. I smashed the phone, yes. I know this is unacceptable. Yes, I'm in therapy. Yes, it's the first time I got aggressive with either of them. I demanded details. My son kept apologizing and saying he didn't know why and that it had only started two weeks ago. They slept together three times. My girlfriend was sobbing and kept trying to hug me, telling me it was a mistake, purely physical, and that she'd never speak to him again. I screamed at my son that I'd given my life to him, that he knew what this meant to me, that he was all I had left. I pulled him upstairs and gave him the money for his phone and kicked him out. I went upstairs to our bedroom, turned her drawers upside down and packed her clothes into two travel bags while she kept asking me to listen. I put them outside, guided her through the door, and told her she could have someone else get the rest of her belongings this week. Both of them have been texting me non-stop until last night, at which point I blocked their number. I feel completely detached. The fact that after two years my girlfriend, knowing my history, could betray me is painful enough, and absolutely nothing will make me forgive her. She refuses to get her stuff until I talk to her so I'm having a friend drop it off to her. The fact my son, who I dropped everything for, worked non-stop to provide for, who was all I had left in this world could do this to me knowing what it would do is another pain entirely. It feels like I lost another family member. I ache for my wife all over again. I know everyone processes grief differently but this was two years after her passing. He had a girlfriend, 
and I was there for him as were therapists every step of the way. So I have a hard time believing grief is the cause of his decision. I can see this as a mistake, he didn't trip and fall. It was a conscious choice to betray someone who loved him. I want to honor my wife by giving my son a chance to hold on to the little family I have left. But this isn't like he stole money from me. It isn't even something that happened once while drunk. He was there for that grief with me. He knew how hard it was for me to move on. Of all the women, he chose mine. All the apologies or future effort can erase that fact or the memory of it. I never did wrong by him, and now I feel like the kid I raised isn't there anymore. Thanks to friends, I'm not drifting into thoughts of self-harm again, but I don't know if I have it in me to ever forgive him. If and when that day comes, what steps can I take to process what happened, talk to him without feeling disgust, and open the door to trusting him again? And if that day never comes, does that make me a bad person? Edit some brief clarification since people on the other relationships up took this and ran with it. 1. Nothing caused him to move out. He asked and said it'd be cool and I helped pay his bills. No hidden resentment I've ever been aware of. 2. Yes, popping up over his shoulder sometimes was something we both found funny. No, I wasn't actually trying to invade his privacy. Yes, he was a part of the joke. 3. Yes, I know I was aggressive. I paid for the phone and we'll be discussing it in therapy. 4. Yes, I know this sounds like something out of a movie. It's not. Tilder. Lost my wife four years ago. Just me and my son ever since. Found out he's sleeping with my girlfriend. Feel completely empty inside. Need some sort of comfort or advice on how or if this can ever be fixed between him and I. And if that doesn't happen, will I ever feel whole on my own again? Update. My 37 plank mass son 21 plank mass slept with my girlfriend 32. I don't know how to process this level of betrayal the 23rd of August 2018. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for the enormous outpouring of support. I've had numerous people offering to their well wishes privately and such compassion from those who commented. I believe it was this support, as well as that from my friends, that kept me from doing anything stupid. I'll try to keep this as concise and short sentenced as possible. It's been a busy couple of days, to say the least. I unblocked both their numbers shortly after posting. My now ex called again that night which I answered. I told her if she wasn't calling to make plans to pick up her stuff I was hanging up, and we decided on the next morning. I called a platonic female friend of mine that night and she agreed to be at my place before my ex showed up as a witness. I had everything packed up and waiting by the door. She showed up as expected and started crying immediately when I came out with her stuff trying to pull the bags to the ground so I'd have my hands free for a hug. I put the bags beside her car and asked her to check if I missed anything, which she refused. I agreed to a quick hug, told her to take care, and walked inside. My friend pulled the chair she was sitting in on my porch over so it was in front of my door, and told her that she was calling the cops if she didn't leave. She did, and I blocked her number again. I texted and called my son numerous times, and left a voicemail telling him that we needed to talk, but first he had to come clean to his girlfriend and accept responsibility for his actions. He didn't respond, so I called her myself. We chatted for a while and she told me he was out with a friend. I asked if he had spoken to her about anything recently, and she said no. So I told her myself, mostly because I felt it was the right thing to do as she was a victim in this too, but I'll admit partially because he's a grown man now and needs to deal with the consequences. He showed up to my place that evening, and I let him in. I'm ashamed to say I wasn't nearly as calm as I hoped I'd be. He asked if ruining his relationship made me feel better, and I told him that he ruined it. Pretty much any hope of productive conversation went out the window and it became a screaming match, at which point I told him to get out and figure out how to deal with being as alone as I was. He slapped me in the head. 
This is a kid who never even threw a toy out of anger in childhood, who wasn't even spank. As disgusting and twisted as it is, this exploded into a physical fight with me being struck in the face multiple times while trying to restrain him as I didn't have it in me to hit him. My son very much not being a fighter, while in my younger years I very much was, until I took him off his feet and held him to the floor. I've never felt that level of rage before, how incredibly overwhelming it was. When I seen the fear on his face I let him up and sat beside him on the floor. I told him to get out. He started crying and told me that his mother would be ashamed of him. This made me break down, pathetically so, and realize how fucked up this wild thing has been. I agreed that she'd be ashamed of both of us, and we hugged while he cried into my chest, something he hasn't done since my wife passed. He asked if it was too late to talk, and I told him it wasn't. I cleaned myself up. We sat at the kitchen table and talked. He told me that he'd stopped therapy a while ago and lead about it, because he felt it wasn't helping. He told me that he was hurt when I kept my girlfriend from him the first year, because although he knew it was to prevent him getting attached if it didn't work out, he still felt excluded. It came out that he had a very well-concealed alcohol problem from me and even his girlfriend. He told me he didn't sleep with her despite me, that he was just feeling lost and he made a stupid choice. I asked him why he couldn't have been honest with me before it came to this, and he told me he didn't feel like he could be honest with himself anymore. We cried together again, prayed together despite neither of us being religious, looked through family photo albums together. We discussed the road forward, and we agreed that the loss we both felt went far deeper than we thought. We decided on attending therapy together. We're going to look into support groups, both for his drinking and other families dealing with loss. And now that he's without his girlfriend and I'm aware of the extent of his issues, I agreed to let him move back home with me so I can make sure he attends his appointments and avoids alcohol. And hopefully so we can bond again with the stipulation that any more violence and he's out the door. He asked me if I can ever forgive him and I told him honestly that I couldn't, but he's still my son and I love him. And I reminded him of what his mother told him when he was a kid, that everyone messes up. It's what you do afterwards that makes the difference. I'll never forgive what he did, but if he learns from this and becomes a better person, then I can forget it and have a great relationship with him regardless. Aside from the fact my lip resembles the mouth of the vampires from Blade 2 for now which has prompted concern from neighbors and friends, the past two days have been great. We've been talking, we cook dinner together, we've gone on walks and we're set to start looking into professional help this coming week. He's incredibly apologetic and has a tenderness I haven't seen from him in years. I have no illusions about the amount of work to be done or how serious this incident was, but I'm feeling very optimistic about the future. Tildrex is out of my life for good. Son was left by his girlfriend, which led to a physical confrontation and an outpouring of honesty. The road ahead looks like it'll be long and full of hurdles, but we both seem committed to each other and getting through it together. I 30F resent my partner 31 meters, and I can feel myself fun loving him. I'm starting to unlove my partner, because I have resentments that I don't know how to deal with. My therapist has all but told me to dump him, have an abortion, and move on. To be clear, an abortion is off the table no matter how stuck sad I feel. We met online, and after talking online for a good seven is months we met. He came over and just never really left. We never made a relationship official, so my kids were never exposed to any amount of intimacy between us. He was a family friend sort of dynamic. Fast forward six months on which we are doing absolutely everything together, supporting each other through work and school, camping together. He has suddenly started leaving for long periods of time visiting people without contact. Sex went from every night before bed to once every two to three weeks. Earphones in all the time, and just a general feeling of I'd done something terrible. 
Suddenly, he just updates his profile to being in a relationship with a girl he's never mentioned to me. And in a private conversation, he tells me, My last really messed me up. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted, and it's not you. I told him to come get his things, packed up absolutely everything in boxes, and waited three days until he showed up at 5 a.m. His girlfriend went to work, and he'd come to get his things. I asked him to be decent human to my kids and say bye to them at the least. He did. I found out I was pregnant in this weekend and decided not to say anything. There was a 50 50 chance it wasn't his, as I had a long-standing FWB I was still seeing. I went out and bought new bedding and rearranged my room trying to heal and purge. A week later he tells me his have dumped him for some other guy and asks to cuddle. I'm weak, and I did. As I was starting to show, I shared with him about my pregnancy and point blank told him he's a possibility. We had already agreed we didn't want kids together, but he took it well. I allowed him to stay so that he could know the baby if it was his. Still, he's telling me he doesn't want a relationship with me. Which is fine, but I had substantially pulled back respecting that I'm not what he wants and stopped seeking out any affection or fun or connection. We go on like this until the baby one is born. We do an at-home DNA naked, and it's determined to be his. During this time, I had named him the name I chose on my own, because we can't be adults and have a real conversation. He got upset immediately, saying I knew the baby having his last and middle name was important. Really, he told me about having that conversation with his ex who he had a kid with and assumed I was going to internalize that as he was telling me my baby fell into that as well. We weren't in a relationship, so I really just took it as him sharing life experiences with me around naming drama. A month after baby one is born, I get an apartment that I'd applied for, and I send him a message. I would like to find an arrangement for you to continue a relationship with baby, but without you living with my children, and I he sent back a message saying he'd be gone by the end of the night. He came back from work, ignored me, and packed. I'm assuming he couldn't find somewhere to go, and he asked when I wanted him out. I told him I didn't wish him ill, we just wanted different things he had until my family moved. Two days later, he asks what a relationship changes between us. We're now in a relationship, but he continues to be on dating sites and chat with women because his ex messed him up, and he doesn't value monogamy. I do all the childcare cooking, cleaning, DR appointments, daycare, searching, grocery shopping, kid events, photos. Everything. He literally walks in the house, throws his stuff in the closet, 30-minute poop, gets high, gets on his video games, and plays on his phone until dinner. I don't mind doing all the cleaning groceries for the most part. I declare that I am doing all the child labor, and I'm pregnant again with another of his children. As long as there are some type of adult moments. We do anything together, don't have conversations, don't have sex 1x1 to 2 weeks. He continues to be on his phone during dinner. He leaves as soon as he's done, and goes to bed when I put the baby to bed at sixes. I attempted to have a conversation in which I am asking if we can be intimate more often and he complained about being the only person initiating. I don't know how to. To be honest, I have so much sexual trauma but I reciprocate the interest every single time he does. I feel like this was the straw that broke the camel's back. I felt my whole body respond in disassociation. Talking with my therapist, she's telling me that he wants me to initiate and that's just how he chose to tell me. Learning to initiate is not a priority for me, and I feel like I do absolutely everything else for this man he can't do this one thing for me consistently.